Hi, my name is Kelly Kamasher, and it is a privilege to welcome you here to our first of four different conversations on how to uh, really invite people to invest in the mission of your church or your ministry with some just great tips and best practices that I've learned over the past 20 years in, in this space. So um, I do get to work with Future Church as the CEO, and uh, we also have Kim here with us today. She's helping with slides. Um, there's two Kims, but the Future Church um, is also a Kim, uh, is helping us with slides today So, and watching the chat. So if you have a question or want to stop me, please put that in the chat. Also in the chat is your handout. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started um, with this. So as you ap um, approach end of year giving, um, and again, there's nothing really magical about end of year with respect to giving, except that it is a motivator for two reasons for in general. Um, one is, of course, Christmas and giving gifts is known um, and practiced in our culture around giving. And number two is that tax uh, that tax advantage is a major motivator for many people with respect to making a gift. And so they want to take advantage of it. So it becomes the time of year in which we focus on funding the, your, the, your mission. Um, and today we're just going to talk about how, how you ask people to join you in that mission, um, investing in your mission in the way that you write, whether that's email or print letters. And yes, snail mail print letters still have an important role to play um, as you invite people to participate in your mission. Uh, we're going to just talk about how to write well um, as you invite people to join you in mission. And these are things that are proven to increase the response that you get. And by the word appeal, I just mean that it's I'm asking you to join me. Um, I don't want this to seem like anything else besides an invitation for people to invest in the mission of your church or ministry. That's, that's what this is all about. So I've got 10 tips for you. And again, put your question in the chat, stop me. We can have a conversation about your context. I'd love to hear from you. But tip number one is this, um, you, whenever you start to put your uh, requests for people to join you in mission um, on paper, uh, there's there's this kind of funny way that it gets turned from the way that people normally um, interact and receive you into a different um, voice and a different way of communicating that is a strange disconnect. Um, so the tip of this is to write like you speak. Most of you are pastors of churches. Most of you have the primary relationship with the people that you're inviting to join you in mission to be in your preaching and your speaking. That's how they receive you. And that's how they interact with you most of the time. And so that the voice that you use when you invite people to join you in mission um, needs to be a very similar one. Uh, so this might be good news for you. Uh, don't try to feel like you need to pull up an eighth grade uh, grammar manual or, or something on how to write a letter or kind of get strangely formal. Instead, you can just um, really uh, dictate a letter to Google and allow it to, to turn it into something you can work with. Um, but you're the trusted voice. Your voice is what people follow they want to know that when they're receiving um, an invitation from you to invest in the mission of your church or your ministry, that it's you. And so uh, whether it's email, again, or a text or a written letter, uh, definitely make sure that it's just the way that you speak. It's your cadence. It's your personality. It's what they know that they will follow the voice of their shepherd um, in this case. So tip number one is don't try to get fancy or over formal or write a term paper all of a sudden. Uh, just, just definitely uh, write just the way that you speak and people will hear your voice. Um, as they receive that invitation um, to join you in your mission. Okay. The second tip is this. Um, it's really valuable when you are inviting people to invest in your mission, to lean into emotions, to really lead with feelings. We sometimes have the tendency to want to put facts to create a case for support, you might have even heard that language. Sometimes fundraisers use that when they're doing big campaigns, they put together a case for support. Um, 
we all do that from the perspective of what's the compelling reason that you should join me in supporting or investing in the mission of our church. And as you share that compelling reason, uh, obviously it's in part faithfulness, but other parts is because the mission of your church is changing lives. And you want to be able to tell those stories of how the mission of your church is transforming lives in a way that touches people's hearts. The, the decision to make an investment in the mission of your church, the decision to make an investment in your Christian ministry is made at the heart, not the head. And I know that that uh, for some of you, that might sound, uh, you might be a little skeptical about that. Um, if you want to throw your email in the chat, I'll show you all the research. I will show you all the research that has been done over the years that, that show that this is true. Now, the facts and the logic need to back it up. So the decision is made at the heart level, the way that uh, people feel about the life transformation that's happening through your ministry or your and or your the mission of your church. Um, then they also need to feel confident in that. And so the facts do matter. The confidence comes from the demonstration of that through case studies or 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 um, different types of data. But the decision to invest in the ministry of your church starts at the heart. So when you're writing, even when you're speaking about the opportunity for people to join you in mission, it has to lean into emotions and really connect with people's hearts. Uh, so that, that's tip number two, is to really focus on that emotional connection that you're making at the very beginning of that invitation you're giving people. All right? I don't see any questions yet, so I'm gonna keep moving on. So tip number three here is you do want to start, whether it's a text message, an email, or a written letter, with something that gets people's attention. And I, if, if you're kind of new at this or haven't done this a lot, I like to encourage people to think of a really compelling question. Did you know? And immediately people lean in. Did I know what? Can you imagine I don't know. Can I imagine that? Like all of a sudden, some sort of short, uh, either question or attention grabbing um, moment at the beginning really works to get people in. So another kind of um, example of this could be something like um, this year, we fed more families in our community than we have ever done that before. Want to know why? Well, yes, I do. <laughs> You know, so I'm not asking you to manipulate, don't manipulate people or tell a half truth or anything like that. All I'm doing is saying that at the very beginning, you want to create an invitation for people to want to learn more about how the mission of your church or the mission of your ministry has actually transformed lives. And if you don't get their attention in that very first uh, sentence, you aren't going to get it later. So if you're going to overthink anything um, in your written communication around uh, the opportunity to invest in your mission, uh, definitely do it at this first sentence. Um, think of something that is uh, that will pique curiosity and invite people um, to go and keep reading or keep following you as you go along. All right, so let's go to tip number four after you've done that. Okay, so this is this this is where I see most people go wrong, which is um, the the temptation to name every single thing you do, every ministry in your church, every mission that you support. Um, you can also I know it comes from a really good place um, being in 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 ministry as long as I have that every every person on your team whether they're uh, part of the vocational ministry team, or they're part of your lay ministry team, whatever, they all matter. 
and they all invest in the mission of your church. They're all working to transform lives with the power of the gospel. And so you want to highlight them and you want to give them a uh, visibility as you're inviting people to support your mission. Don't, don't do it. (laughs) Don't, don't uh, create a huge list or a, a review of every single thing such that people get lost. I mean, because that's what's going to happen. They're going to get lost. So as you craft your invitation for people to support you, know your message and relentlessly focus on it. So your message doesn't necessarily have to be something as singular as, you know, one particular area of of ministry that you do. It can be something about like, you know, our, our church was founded out of our founding Christmas, a church was with related to vulnerable children. And we can tie almost everything we do at our church to the ultimate uh, transformation of the lives of vulnerable kids that our church's heartbeat began with. Um, so that can be the message. Um, but you want to have one unifying message that you just disciplined uh, focus on throughout your communication. Avoid that temptation to list, review, um, aggregate everything else that you do. Because once you know your message and you focus on it, you're going to be more successful because at the end of the day, the focus of this communication is I am inviting you to support the mission of our church, or you can say this, I'm I'm inviting you to participate in Jesus's mission to build the kingdom through the ministry of our church. If people have to find that in your communication, we've lost the, we've lost the point of the communication. That's, that is it. Um, It's not to show off everything else that's going on, which is wonderful, but it's, this is why we exist. And I'm inviting you to participate in it with me, period. (laughs) Now, I'm going to give you a few other tips on what goes around that, but know your message. This is who we are. I'm inviting you to participate in our mission and our ministry. That is the focus of this communication, whether you're giving it verbally, email, text, or letter, and you got to stay on message. All right. Okay. So then I'm going to go to another counter, a counterintuitive tip, which is number five, which is this, um, in your written communication, maybe not your preaching, but in your written communication longer really is better. You may be tempted in our, in our quick, fast world to craft communication in written form that is short and sweet. Um, there's lots of reasons for this, uh, but the data is very clear. People have tested um, different types of appeal letters for nonprofits, churches, you know, all kinds of things. And longer pieces of communication perform way better. Now, there's there are some types of science to this. In other words, you got to keep people engaged. Um but the opportunity to keep bringing people into the story and bringing them deeper into a relationship with you, emotionally connecting with you and helping them to feel like an integral part of the, of the mission that you're on together happens during that length. It happens during the continued conversation you create as you, um, in in a longer, a longer letter. It also just by sheer word count, even I guarantee you people aren't actually reading it all, but the sheer word count demonstrates that you care about it. So think about that for a second. If you get a little note from an acquaintance or something, Hey, good to see you. Um, at the basketball game, hope you're well, great. If you get a four page handwritten letter from that person, 
hey, it was really nice to see you last Friday at such and such basketball game. We haven't connected in a really long time. I love seeing your family there and your, your daughters, you know, as point guard was, I don't know. But if you get a four page handwritten letter, you're already feeling much more seen, much more valued, much more a part of the relationship than you would if you got a handwritten, like a, a two sentence note. Right. And that, I just want to encourage you. It's, it's not different as you think about writing your letters to people with respect to inviting them to, to and join you in supporting the mission of your church. The longer the letter, the deeper the relationship, the more emotional connection you have on um, these letters, uh, when written perform, meaning you get a much larger response to them. Um, so I know that it, um, I know that it seems counterintuitive that people want quick as heat, but tell a story, connect emotionally. And then the other kind of tip around this, um, is, you know, underline or bold the phrases in each paragraph that, matter so that if you only read the phrases in each paragraph that were underlined or highlighted, you would get a coherent short note that made sense. Because some people will just scan those and that needs to make sense. But the fact that all of the words are on the page means that you will have a much better chance of having a response. So that's the tip. If, if you have questions about that, we can go into that later because it is a little counterintuitive. All right, let's go to number six. Now, having said that, I want you to put a lot of words on the page, but I want you to make it insanely readable. And what I mean about that is it needs to be um, very accessible to somebody at a seventh grade reading level. Short sentences. Short, complete thoughts. Try to avoid jargon that is only um, known to the insider community of your church or your ministry. For example, I was working with um, a ministry that does a lot of work around um, intervening for families before they're homeless. And the invitation to support the ministry they do had a lot of jargon that they use internally related to um, Department of Health and Human Services and the way that housing uh, works in the city. And I was like, no one's going to know what this means, but they, they like the curse of knowledge, they all knew what that meant. Um, so as you're writing your letter, you want it to be able to be completely accessible to the seventh grader who lives next door and knows nothing about your church or your ministry. Make it super readable and really accessible um, and because you just really want to remove all the all the reasons that people would be like, I don't understand this or I can't follow, follow it um, to get better. Um, I give you in the tip sheet, there's a, uh, a, a website you can go to and, and submit your the copy of your email or your letter and it will score it for you on whether or not it meets this criterion of being readable to the average middle schooler. Um, and it'll let you know if your sentences are too long or your vocabulary is too high of a, of a competency or mastery level so that you can bring it down. Um, and I don't mean down and less important, I just mean more accessible. Um, but these, we also know from science that these letters that um, hit this mark of readability, they have a higher response rate and participation rate. So we want that for you. All right, here's another insider trick that we do. Uh, it is a, a, a really fun one. And it, this is the word you, Y-O-U, the word you. This is counterintuitive because usually when you write to invite people to join you in ministry or mission and on mission, you want to talk about the church's mission or your ministry. And that's completely understandable, except that's not the invitation that you're offering people. The invitation that you're offering people is the opportunity to live out their calling. The invitation you're offering people 
is one to go in a deeper faithfulness with Jesus as a disciple. What your Avery people is the opportunity to be a part of the mission of your church, of your church, because they are carrying that mission with them where they live, where they work, where they play. This letter is not about you at all. The most important thing you can do is to shift the tense of this to you. You're, you are a part of the ministry of our church. You help to fuel the mission of our church by doing this and this and this. Your calling is really important. We wouldn't be able to, to, to be on mission together for the kingdom without you. Whatever it is. This letter is, is about the, the recipient. It's not about the sender. Um, I, I was kind of like to use that image of, a, of an electric uh, a cord with a plug. Like the opportunity you're giving people is that like they, have, they have a desire they do to transform lives and you're giving them the opportunity to do it. You're giving them the opportunity to plug into the power, but it's about them. It's, I want to help you with your innate desire to be part of transform transformative ministry, transformative power of the gospel. I want to help you. I know that is inside you and I'm just going to help you place it by joining what we're doing as the body of Christ in our church or in the ministry that you lead but it is a hundred percent about them, their calling, their faithfulness, giving them a place to live out that, um, that calling on their lives and to invest. So what we do is we always look through the communications that we write and we circle the number of, we circle the word you and your page should bleed. Like there should be so many circles on it because the word you shows up so many times uh, that it looks that is uncomfortable uh, with red ink, red, red circles everywhere on your page. Um, so really, really think about that and then go back and write it in an authentic way, of course. Uh, but just really pay attention to that tense that you're using as you craft communication. All right. Number eight, tip number eight. Um, this is uh, one of those ones that that falls in the, I can't, uh, I don't, I don't think you need to hear it, but you need to hear it, which is don't forget to ask people um, with a, with a way that gives them a clear way to respond. I've actually seen many a communication in which people are like asking people to join their mission. People are like, I want to, yes, I want to but there's no instruction or no way, no clear way to take that next step. So it could be a, um, like, in other words, don't assume that people know what it means to participate on mission with you. So you need to actually spell it out. Therefore, I, you know, you are invited. Ha, ah, not I'm inviting you. You are invited. <laughs> to participate by making an investment in the mission of, and if you feel like it, X amount of dollars, that could, I'm going to get into that. I think it's next month's webinar. When, when's the right time to do that? But in a general communication by investing today, by going to this link and making a gift, by putting your gift in the envelope that is included in this, this letter that you just opened, Buy text to give right now um, and have the text to give instructions there. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, if your goal is a participation goal, you're invited to be part of getting our participation to where, you know, 100% of the people that belong to the body of Christ or whatever, however, you, whatever your contextual language is um, from your ecclesiology, our congregation, the body of Christ worshiping together, whatever it is, a hundred percent make a gift of some kind. Do that today, whatever it is, whatever your call to action is, just don't forget to say it. 
<laughs> don't forget to make it really big and say it probably twice and make sure that the link works or there's an envelope or something, whatever it is, actually is easy to follow and that people can respond and take an action right there um, because they have absorbed the communication and they're ready to respond. And if you think it's clear, great, but make sure you test it with a few people who also think it's clear. Because again, curse of knowledge, we don't see our own processes and systems the way other people do. So just test that out um, with a trusted neighbor, friend, or outsider who doesn't use your systems every day and that it works. All right. Um, number nine is a, is a psychological uh, tip, which is uh, you're going to need to create some sense of urgency in your communication for people to want to respond. If you're anything like me, if I get bills in the mail, I throw them into a bin and I'll handle them one day. Um, or, you know, I'll, I'll just pile things up. There, there, other than December 31st, and in our December webinar, we'll talk a little bit about how to navigate the last few days of the year. The, December 31st, in and of itself, creates urgency, which you definitely do not want to wait that long. And you don't want to rely on the tax benefit. It's actually way less of a motivator for people to give to your mission than actual ministry. So you got to create the sense of urgency um, through the mission of your church and what you're accomplishing together. Um, just because you as their pastor ask them, or, or if you're a ministry leader, because you as their ministry leader ask them, is actually reason enough for people to want to respond. I'm asking for your support. I'm asking for you to take a step with us by October 15th. You can create a reason for that. The elders of the church or whatever you call your leaders um, are looking at being great stewards of our resources and how we're going to invest in the new year. And your response today helps us to make that possible, um, you know, whatever. Um, there might actually be something that you are getting um, ready to invest in or launch in December, November, in the holidays, uh, especially um, thinking of an urban church that does an, inc like an incredible investment in the city during, during the winter and holiday months. And they need a lot of cash in order to be able to successfully reach those people for Christ. And so they say, you know, hey, this is our big, this is go time for us. Um, so we're looking for that response to come back uh, before November 1st by Halloween, um, in order to be able to um, do our biggest contribution to, to the community that we do each year. So whatever it is for you, but you need to say like, there has to be a, a reason to not put that communication down, email, letter, whatever it is, and get back to it when they feel like it. Then it's lost. There needs to be a reason to respond right away. And I am not saying create something fake or false to manipulate people. But do share the genuine reason that a quicker response will help you be successful in leading your ministry or fulfilling the mission of your church. And then just simply communicate that real reason. But be sure to communicate it. All right. And number 10, the last one here is um, the value of the PS. Uh, this might seem really like old, old fashioned and somewhat romantic. The PS, uh, of course, it stands for postscript, meaning after the script or after my thought, by the way, I think is the text, uh, the BTW is the text message version of the postscript, by the way, um, whatever you want to call it. Here's the point. When people receive a written communication from you asking uh, for their um, participation in your ministry, uh, there's a ton of science, again, to studying the, the postscripts or that little by the way at the end of the letter. So it's under your signature um, or however you sign off, there is a last by the way um, statement. 
it has to be very intentionally craft, crafted. Your, it is the, the heartbeat of your message. So lean back into, if you told a story, uh, you want to pick up that story here at the very end and say, people like Maria are counting on you. Thanks for responding here by such and such a day. And here is like the link or the text to number or whatever. So if you told a story, you know, refer to the story. If you talked about, you know, hey, you know, our um, the people in our city that we serve between in November and December with a hot meal and a whatever it is you do um, are counting on us. Please respond by such and such a day here. Whatever the little bit of that story or compelling ministry contribution you're making um, that you used in your communication to emotionally connect with people, refer to it here, reiterate the invitation to participate and remind them again the best way to do it. So that when they go pick it up and go online or text to give or whatever, they're not fighting to find it. It's right there. It's at the very end. They know where to find it. it visually, it's right there. You've made it easy for them. Um, and you've you've made that invitation one more time. It's like, it's why we do the altar call at the end of a service, friends. Like if you do an altar call, that's your tradition. It's just the same thing. You've presented the gospel. Now you're inviting them to come in and, and, and receive Christ or their receive the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing. You've, you've presented the reason, the good compelling reason that people should invest in the ministry of your church and you're just calling them down to do it. That's what that postscript does. There's just an invitation uh, to be a part of it, but you want it there. You want it clean. You want it crisp. Um, so people don't have to fight to find it. All right. Those are my 10 tips. Um, again, no desire to manipulate or to create false statements of any kind. This is all inside you. You believe in your mission as a church. You believe in the ministry that you lead. It's there. People want to invest in it. So give them, give them, give them an easy way to be a part of it. And these tips are just designed to make a more effective connection as you do, as you share that invitation in written communication which, by the way, should start right now. You're wondering, you know, when, you know, should I wait till December to send out my letters? No, you should not. Um, if, if you have given to an organization in the past, a philanthropic organization of any kind in the past, you are going to start to see your mailboxes flooded um, in the next couple of weeks. This is, this is when it starts. I'm not saying you should try to compete with those nonprofits or do what they do. You probably can't because they are machines, but you definitely want to note their timing. Um, repetition matters. So if you can drip things out across the fall, it, it, it's not even, it's just human, right? Like the third time you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, I need to do that. <laughs> So just, just make sure you're saying it three or four times and that you're, that it's clear enough that when people go, oh yeah, I need to do that. They can quickly find or remember how to do that. Um, and, and you got them there and you, well, you meet them there. So, all right. Is there any other question? Okay. So Kim was just, uh, reminding, yeah, just a good, good note to, yeah, be on message. The purpose of this is I'm asking you, I'm inviting you to participate in the mission that we share together. This is, it's, and it's all about you being able to live out your calling and to be a faithful disciple. And we get to do, we get to do this together. Isn't that cool? We get to do this together. Um, and in doing that, um, you'll win. So, all right. Um, I don't see any other questions. The tip sheet is in the uh, chat box. If you haven't downloaded that, we'll definitely also include it in the replay link to this. Um, but if you there, if you go to the chat box, the tip sheet is there for you. And sign up, um, each month, uh, I'll be doing a different um, webinar on a different aspect of of how to um, be effective in 
inviting people to support your mission. So I will see you next month in October for our next go around. In the meantime, thanks so much for joining us. And I hope this is helpful to you. Have a great day.